Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So I thought that uh, I would talk about this little fight breakdown, my fight prediction for this big trilogy that is going to be happening uh, here in a few weeks. Of course it happens on July 24th on a Saturday and I'm here to talk about it. Anyways, the date today, I believe, is July 3rd, so I don't know when exactly I'm going to post this video. I don't know if I'm going to post it today. I don't know if I'm going to post it a week from now. Sometime within the next week for sure. Could be today, could be within a few days, could be within the next week. I don't know. But when it comes down to it overall, I just thought that I would post this a little bit early. That way a certain amount of people see it, and that way I can get my breakdown out of the way. But anyways, let's talk about this rubber match. Let's talk about this trilogy. Who do I think is going to win this fight and why? And overall, what chance do I give both fighters to win the fight? So let's head into it. So I remember watching both re, uh, or excuse me, both matches uh, when it came to these two fighting each other. I remember both matches, and I'm sure a certain amount of you guys do as well. I'm not sure what all your opinions are about them uh, when it comes down to it, but I remember I remember the first fight happening. I believe that was all the way back in 2018. And uh, I, I remember favoring Deontay Wilder in that fight. Actually, for those of you that don't know, I actually favored Deontay Wilder in both fights. I thought Deontay Wilder was going was gonna to get the knockout in both fights. In the first fight, I predicted Deontay Wilder to knock out Tyson Fury. Because Tyson Fury, even though I knew he would be a challenging opponent, I didn't know if he was going to be the same guy that had fought Vladimir Klitschko. You were talking about a guy that had a certain amount of drug issues, weight problems, and he had not fought top-tier competition for a very, very long time when it came down to it. And I just didn't know if he had it in him to really <laughs> defeat a guy who was very, very hungry and overall very aggressive in Deontay Wilder. Well, it turned out I ended up being wrong. I thought Tyson Fury not only won that first fight, I thought he should have clearly won that first fight. And, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm surprised at the scorecards, because this is boxing, and if you've been watching boxing for a certain amount of years, you know that, <laughs> you know, saying overall that there was a bad, you know, uh, scorecard is like, you know, in boxing is like saying the sky is blue, <laughs> you know, so it is what it is, it, it just happens way too much, unfortunately, but it is what it is, I thought Tyson Fury clearly won that fight, I know I'm not the only one that's in that boat when it comes down to it, personally, every time I've scored that fight, I think I scored it nine rounds to three, for Tyson Fury, maybe you could have scored it eight rounds to four, but I don't think I can have it much farther apart than that. Anyways, when it comes down to it, I thought Tyson Fury clearly outboxed Deontay Wilder and outthrew him and outlanded him in the first fight, even though there was a couple of good punches that Deontay Wilder was able to land, and obviously he ended up getting a couple of knockdowns, uh, one very brutal one in the last round. Then the rematch happens a couple of years later. Of course, this happened last year in 2020, February 2020, I believe to be exact. And Tyson Fury, of course, ends up winning this fight. Not only does he win this fight, he wins this fight by complete domination. He ends up surprising a lot of people because a lot of people did not think that Tyson Fury was going to be able to stop Deontay Wilder and that he was going to be able to look as impressive as he did. What I'm going to say is this, I favored Deontay Wilder actually to win the rematch because I thought that he would adjust maybe a little bit and that maybe he'd be able to land the right hand a little bit more accurately because maybe he had seen what Tyson Fury was able to do. And Tyson Fury, even though he said he was going to come at Deontay Wilder, uh, I was wondering, I, I didn't think overall that he was lying com to, you know, per se, uh, but I did think, okay, well, I don't think he's going to come straight at him when it comes down to it, but... I think, you know, maybe he's going to be coming forward here and there, backing up here and there when it comes down to it. Maybe, you know, to get some points early on the scorecards, maybe he'll go at him a little bit, but then he'll start, you know, kind of fighting his fight, you know, bad boxing on the back foot again. That's not what he did. <laughs> Tyson Fury went full, you know, toward Deontay Wilder. He went forward at him. He didn't look too afraid to go forward uh, towards Deontay Wilder. And even when Deontay Wilder, even when he landed, a couple of right hands early. He didn't lose confidence in his game plan. He didn't lose confidence in his ability. And that's what makes a great fighter when it comes down to it. He was able to come forward and really expose a certain amount of the flaws that Deontay Wilder has. And I think that when Tyson Fury came forward, when he started coming forward, I think Deontay Wilder was very much surprised because I don't think he expected that. <laughs> I don't think he expects a lot of people really to come forward at him because he says, well, who dares come forward at me? you know, with someone who has power like I do. 
But when you're in there with a fighter like a Tyson Fury, who can do a multitude of things, and who overall also is very physically talented as well. Now, I don't think Tyson Fury necessarily is the athlete that a Deontay Wilder is. Obviously, he doesn't have the one-shot knockout power that a Deontay Wilder has. Uh, you know, maybe overall he doesn't have, you know, the just the strength that Deontay Wilder has. But Tyson Fury, he's a very physically gifted man as well, just as he is overall when it comes to boxing IQ. Because Tyson Fury is, <laughs> first of all, he's anywhere from 250 to 270 pounds when it comes to weight. Maybe sometimes even more than that. He said he's going to even try to get heavier for this third fight. I don't know how true that is. We'll have to see what happens. Last time he wasn't lying about it, so maybe this time he's not going to be lying about it. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. But Tyson Fury, not only is he going to have a weight advantage against Deontay Wilder, uh, he can compete with Deontay Wilder in terms of height and reach. And what that means for Deontay Wilder is that he's going to have a more difficult time trying to hit Tyson Fury flush. Because Tyson Fury, with his reach, he can kind of stick his reach in Deontay Wilder's face and overall kind of make that, you know, reach that Deontay Wilder would usually have against other opponents kind of irrelevant when it comes down to what Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua when you take a look at those guys, they actually usually fight guys that are more similar to their size. They actually usually fight those types of guys better. When you actually uh, pay attention to Tyson Fury's fights, uh, the guys actually that ended up usually being around his own same size, he actually ended up handling them somewhat with ease when it came down to it. Somewhat the same with Anthony Joshua. But when it came to those shorter, could get on the inside guys that maybe might be able to rough you up, whether it was an Andrew Weese or a Joseph Parker for an Anthony Joshua or for Tyson Fury, whether it was an Otto Valin or overall that, uh, what was his name, John McDermott, something like that, one of, one of the earlier guys that he's fought, or Steve Cunningham when it came down to it. Uh, those guys gave Tyson Fury the most amount of problems. And Deontay Wilder, it's you know, it's no offense against Deontay Wilder, but he is a very one-dimensional fighter, or at least he was. Now, is he going to change a whole lot in this third fight? Who knows? It's possible. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but this is where we really get to the breakdown of the third fight and overall who I think is going to win this fight. Uh, first of all, if we were going to bring up the cheating allegations, I've always said this, I've never once been a believer in any of these cheating allegations. Now, if you want to allege maybe the PEDs once upon a time or something like that, that makes sense. I would say overall that, you know, that's very, very possible. But when we talk about this glove gate, when we talk about uh, you know, this, <laughs> you know, spiking of the water and all sort of stuff. I've never believed in any of it. I've never once ever believed in any of it when it comes down to it. Uh, I know a certain amount of Deontay Wilder fans, they'll try to say, well, I just think it's weird how Tyson Fury had this, you know, power out of nowhere. It's not that he really had this power out of nowhere. Tyson Fury always has had the ability to hurt opponents. It's just that he's never had A-grade power. And he really didn't have A-grade power in the Deontay Wilder rematch either. It's not like he knocked him out within two or three rounds. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have, uh, you know, A-grade power, but he has enough power combined with his regular punching power and combined with his weight when it comes down to it. I mean, he has enough power to hurt you. It's not like Tyson Fury is just this, you know, six foot nine Pauli Nagy. <laughs> He's a person overall that can punch. He can hurt you. And I know Deontay Wilder, I know he wants to say these things to appease his fan base and to trick the fan base and lie about, you know, all this shit when it comes down to he wants to say that Tyson Fury had no power, which was never true because when Deontay Wilder was being honest in a Colin Cowherd interview, he said overall that Tyson Fury was able to hurt him in the first fight. But it is what it is. Tyson has always had the ability to hurt Deontay Wilder. And that's what I think a certain amount of Deontay Wilder fans just don't grasp. It's not impossible to hurt Deontay Wilder. <laughs> Deontay can get hurt. I've seen him hurt against several opponents. I've seen him hurt against Luis Ortiz. I've seen him hurt against Eric Molina. I've seen him hurt against Dominic Brazil. All right? I've seen him hurt against those guys. And I've seen him hurt against Tyson Fury in the first fight when it came down to it. So Tyson Fury... Once again, he doesn't have Anthony Joshua type power. He doesn't have, you know, Deontay Wilder type power, but he has his own power. You know, he has his own level of power. He does have solid B grade power and he can hurt you. He can knock you out uh, if you're not careful. And Deontay, I just think that he's too one dimensional to really escape the boxing ability of a Tyson Fury. And when it comes to this third fight, uh, do I believe that this third fight is going to look something like what the second fight looked like 
I believe it probably will. Yes, I do. That's my personal opinion on this fight. Would I be surprised if maybe Tyson Fury is a little bit more on the back foot in this fight? Just to be a little bit more careful because you don't know what Deontay Wilder is necessarily going to pull out. Um, maybe. It wouldn't surprise me. But I think Tyson Fury, I think that he's going to probably try at least a very similar strategy when it comes down to it. I believe he will be going forward at least sometime during the fight at Deontay Wilder. I do believe that he will be doing that. And uh, personally, in my opinion, I think that Tyson Fury, I do think that he is going to get the stoppage win. I do believe overall that he more than likely is going to stop Deontay Wilder. Now, to talk about Deontay Wilder himself, a lot of Deontay Wilder fans, I notice overall, they apparently expect this new and improved Deontay Wilder. They expect this completely different version of a Deontay Wilder, or at least some of them do, or some of them at least have the mindset overall where, well, Deontay Wilder, he only needs to change one or two things to beat Tyson Fury. I'm not necessarily sure about that. And in my opinion, Deontay Wilder, and I know a lot of them probably are not going to want to hear this, but it is what it is. Deontay is not the most multifaceted type of fighter. <laughs> you know, he's not the most multifaceted fighter out there, meaning overall he can't really do a great amount of things. Uh, I'm not saying overall that he has no skills whatsoever, but uh, he, he does have obviously a lack of skills compared to with Tyson Fury uh, or some of the other possible heavyweights out there, like say in Anthony Joshua. So when it comes down to what I'm just going to say is this personally, I'm not saying count Deontay Wilder out. I don't think that that would be a smart thing to do I don't think you ever want to count a fighter out completely, especially one like Deontay Wilder, where if he does hit you correctly, uh, you know, he can knock you out. You know, if he does hit you very, very good with that right hand, and let's say he did learn to mask it, let's say overall he did learn some new things, which, you know, Malik Scott's been trying to teach him, and who knows who else uh, when it comes down to it. You never know. If he hits Tyson Fury correctly, he certainly can hurt him. He certainly can knock him down. He, he can even knock him out if he, if he hits him correctly. But Wilder is going to have to hit him very, very flush. And that's really the question. Can Deontay Wilder do that? Now, so many people, of course, would say, well, of course he can do it because, you know, Deontay Wilder, he only needs to be perfect for, you know, two seconds. Where Tyson Fury only needs to be perfect, you know, he needs to be perfect for the whole entire time. I understand where people's mindset is going in, but, <laughs> the, you know, this fight kind of reminds me of Muhammad Ali versus George Foreman. And when we take a look at that in hindsight, we can take a look at that and say overall, well, you know, Muhammad Ali, he needs to be perfect for the whole entire fight. Where George Foreman, you know, he just needs to be perfect for two seconds. Because, you know, if you were watching boxing back then, or even if you weren't and you know of George Foreman, you know the type of power George Foreman had. But when it comes down to it, George Foreman, what he didn't have <laughs> is that he didn't have that A-grade boxing ability. He didn't have the A-grade skill set. He didn't have the A-grade boxing IQ, and all he had was a plan A, and that's the problem. Will Deontay Wilder have more than a plan A in this fight? Will his skills really have improved for this fight, and how is he going to get past all of Tyson Fury's abil abilities when it comes down to it? Because you're not just talking about a person overall that is a very skilled boxer. You're talking about a guy overall that has a very, very good movement. You're talking about a guy that's six foot nine. He's going to be somewhat difficult to hit for Deontay Wilder. You're talking about a guy that has around the same reach as Deontay Wilder. You're talking about a guy that's going to be probably hugging him and leaning on him and roughhousing him on the inside, just like he did in his last fight to wear down Deontay Wilder and to tie him up so he doesn't get off a certain amount of punches. You're talking about a guy that has a very potent jab, and that's kind of where the fight starts. If Tyson Fury, just like he did in the first couple of fights, starts to out-jab Deontay Wilder, in my opinion, that's already the beginning of the end for Deontay Wilder. It all starts with the jab. Now, if Deontay can somewhat compete with Tyson Fury when it comes to the jab, then maybe I'd say you have something there. But is he going to be able to do that? <laughs> and once again, I know Deontay Wilder and his fan base, you know, there's a certain amount of them out there that... One who alleged that Tyson Fury, that he cheated, apparently with both gloves somehow. <laughs> but when it comes down to it overall, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be impossible to cheat with both gloves. What I'm saying overall is this. They're alleging that there's a different type of tactic per glove. So <laughs> that's, that's why it's a little bit interesting. But when it comes down to it, you can tell that Tyson Fury, every time he lands a decent punch over Deontay Wilder, it hurts him. 
And that's why I know Deontay Wilder and his fan base, they want to claim that, you know, oh, this fight's going to be completely different because Tyson Fury, he's not going to be able to cheat. I never believed in those cheating allegations. And you can tell every time Tyson Fury even lands a potent jab on Deontay Wilder, it hurts Deontay Wilder and it pushes his head back. And I'm not sure if Deontay is going to be able to handle the skills of Tyson Fury. I don't know if he's going to be able to handle the jab. I don't know if he's going to be able to handle the size. I don't know if he's going to be able to handle any of that. I don't know if he's going to be able to handle any of that. Uh, in the rematch, he showed me that he was not able to handle the Tyson Fury package at all. At all. And, you know, we, we can sit here and take a look at it and say, well, Deontay Wilder, all he needs to do is land once. Yes, but it's going to have to be 100% flush. I don't think a lot of people really realize that. You know, <laughs> and, and in the rematch, he wasn't able to land that punch flush at all. There was not one moment in the fight where he was able to land flush at all. At all. You know, it is what it is. He, he was not able to land that flush punch whatsoever. He was able to land a couple of right hands, but they never were flush. Tyson Fury was able to roll with the punches, or overall he was usually able to avoid it. A certain amount of the times he actually would use his reach or his inside fighting to get, you know, out of getting hit with the right hand, or getting hit with punches in general. Now, what do I think Deontay Water should do in this fight? I think that he should try to jab with Tyson Fury. I think he should try to jab to the body. I think that he should try to go to the body of Tyson Fury. But I thought that he tried that early in the fight last time. And I just don't think it worked out because I think he gave up on it early because Tyson Fury, he started out jabbing him very, very early. And Deontay Wilder said, you know, damn, this guy, you know, he's not only coming at me when it comes down to it, but this guy's punches, they do have a decent impact when it comes down to not only that, but I can't outbox this guy. And I think Deontay Wilder learned that very, very early on. Now, once again, you know, he does appear to be maybe possibly learning some new things. Do I think it's going to be enough? No, personally, I don't. And when I take a look at fighters recently that have changed certain corners, I don't necessarily have a problem that he's being cornered by Malik Scott. I don't necessarily have a gripe with that. But what I am going to say is this, at least if we're looking at this with a logical and sound mind, there's not many fighters that I take a look at, at least in recent years, where I say, you know, well, they had a corner change and they look completely different in the next fight. Uh, and that's, it sounds like that's what a certain amount of Deontay Wilder fans are hoping for, <laughs> that he's going to pick up a certain amount of skills. In my opinion, Deontay Wilder doesn't just need to pick up one or two skills. He needs to pick up a decent amount of skills <laughs> against Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is an A-class heavyweight boxer. Deontay Wilder, I think he's an A-class heavyweight. Let, let me rephrase this. Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, they're both A-class heavyweight boxers, but Tyson Fury is an A-class boxer with an A-grade skill set. Deontay Wilder is an A-class is an A-class boxer with an A probably a C-class skill set. At least you know before the adjustments. I'm not sure how much the adjustments are really going to help him because I don't know how much he's really picked up on when it comes down to it. I don't know how much he's learned. And you can look good in sparring. You can look good on the pads when it comes down to it. But when you're fighting that six foot nine, two hundred seventy plus pound giant who can box, who has better foot speed than you and better movement and better defense than you and has punches that can hurt you when it comes down to it, <laughs> that's going to be a different story. All right, when it comes down to it, at least that's personally the way that I think, uh, you know, best for Deontay Wilder, you know, but when it comes down to it, like I said, I, I don't see him beating Tyson Fury in the third fight. I don't see it happening. Uh, I see Deontay Wilder more than likely probably getting stopped sometime within about, I would say, six to nine rounds, somewhere around there. Uh, you never know what can happen. I'm not saying count Deontay Wilder out. I give Deontay Wilder about a 30% chance in this fight, but I don't know if he's picked up on enough. And like I said, there's just not that many fighters as of recent to where you can say that, well, they change corners and they look completely different and, you know, for the better. There's some fighters to where they change corners and or, or change coaches, and they looked worse, <laughs> especially in a fight overall to where you're having a rematch against a guy that literally just battered you around the ring. I mean, that's, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's a very, 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 very uphill battle. That, that That's all I'm saying when it comes down to it. I believe that it's a very big uphill battle, uh, and I think that Deontay Wilder, I think more than likely he is going to probably uh, get beat in this fight. That's what I personally believe. Uh, I think Tyson Fury, I think that he is going to come forward in this fight. 
I'm also going to be very interested to see how much Deontay Wilder truly believes in these allegations that he is alleging with these cheating allegations. Because I want to see if Tyson Fury comes at Deontay Wilder. I want to see if Deontay Wilder goes straight at him or if he starts backing up. Because if he starts backing up, that'll tell me that Deontay Wilder, he doesn't believe in these cheating allegations. That, that would tell me overall that he believes that Tyson Fury, that he just has enough power to hurt him. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, it'll be very interesting. We'll see overall what Deontay Wilder has picked up. We'll see overall what he's going to be able to do. You know, it'll be very, very interesting. I, you know, I'm just saying, though, if I had to place my money on it, I'd place my money on Tyson Fury. I'd place my money on Tyson Fury. I just think that he's got the complete package for a heavyweight fighter. I think that Tyson Fury... He's really the Muhammad Ali of this era when we talk about who is the most complete heavyweight fighter of this era. Now, that's not me saying overall that he's as talented or as skilled as Muhammad Ali was. That's not me necessarily saying that. But what I am saying is this. When you talk about the complete package for a heavyweight fighter, Tyson Fury is the best all-around heavyweight of this era, at least so far from what I've seen. And that, that to me is what makes him the Muhammad Ali of this era. What Deontay Wilder is, in my opinion, he is the George Foreman. He's a very, very, very dangerous fighter when it comes down to it. And, then, you know, I'm not going to say that Deontay was as great as Foreman because obviously Foreman accomplished more in his career. But when it comes down to the overall, Deontay, very, very similar. You know, he wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't necessarily, you know, George Foreman, he wasn't necessarily known for his A-grade technique. You know, he was known for his A-grade power and over his ability to bully around his opponents and having a plan A and not usually having another plan to back it up. That usually is what George Foreman was known for. And when he finally went up against an opponent in Muhammad Ali that could handle that power and had a multitude of things that he could do, he ended up not only getting beat, he ended up getting knocked out. It is what it is. It's the same thing here with Deontay Wilder. Can he adjust? We'll have to see what happens. But there's not many fighters out there to where I've seen, especially at 35 years of age, to where, you know, they just started adjusting now. And I say, oh, oh yeah, they look like a completely better fighter. Or I think they're really going to win a rematch, uh, you know, overall in a fight to where they ended up getting dominated before. That, 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 that just doesn't happen very often. So I got to go with Tyson Fury in this one, man. I personally think that Tyson Fury probably is going to get the knockout. That's my personal prediction. We'll see what happens. Let me know overall what y'all think. Uh, but that's my prediction. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know overall what you think on this fight, who you think is going to win, and by what fashion. Uh, and that's really about it for today. I got Tyson Fury, uh, probably by knockout within about six to nine rounds. Would it surprise me if it went to decision? Wouldn't surprise me. We'll see what happens. But when it comes down to it, that's really about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.